welcome to the HQ Movie Review. I'm Rachel. I'm Josh. I'm Jack. And I'm Brandon. So today we watched Speed Racer. A classic. Yeah. Great movie. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I went into this super biased. I, I love this movie. I've seen it very many times. I went into this movie having seen it when I was in high school many years ago in when it came out in theaters. And I remember liking it, but I didn't remember really anything about it. I came in completely fresh. I don't know anything about Speed Racer as a franchise or as the movie. I watched this as like a nine or ten year old child and I loved it because that's exactly what a nine or ten year old child would love. Yeah. To be specific, I haven't just seen this movie. I've also seen a little bit of the original show. I've seen uh, the Speed Racer The Next Generation show, which is okay. <laughs> it's very okay. Good. I saw some of the original Speed Racer like on Boomerang as a kid and stuff, so I, I knew what to expect when I got into the movie originally. I definitely liked it because it kind of like paid homage to it, and at the same time it was completely different. <laughs> yeah. The Mach 5 is a much smaller role, but it's still an important role. So I think we should start with the aesthetics. Can we start with the aesthetics? I think we can. I think we can start with it's the one aesthetics. one of the first things to see. It opens up with this lovely kaleidoscope like logos thing. That was cool. And then it immediately jumps into, it's an anime. Did you know this was an anime? It's an anime. I would like to point out the fact that three of us individually all said this looked like Spy Kids. It's a Spy Kids movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty Spy Kids. It's Fast and Furious meets Spy Kids. Yeah, which and is it, great absolutely 100 percent looks like spy kids movie all the way through it's it really fits with like the frenetic energy they tried to capture like all of the redub dialogue where everything is super fast and everyone talks just like this oh yeah it's great and all the the cuts between sequences are like a, a kind of like a scroll of people across the screen as something else comes in behind it or that one transition where you know, Speed Racer's car, like, busts through the dust cloud of Rex's car. Yeah, this movie is, is infamous for head wipes, but <laughs> the opening race does have some of my favorite transitions in, like, movie history. Yeah. Like, all of the shots of Speed Racing Rex's ghost are great. And oh, also yeah. remind me very much of Mario Kart doing time trials. It really works, though. Like, all the transitions... Um I think it just kind of locks in this idea of like it this movie knows what it is and it does it very well. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. The cinematography in this movie is just as hectic as you can possibly imagine. It is very difficult to follow, but it works. See, I'd argue that it's almost easier to follow like if it'd been shot realistically, it'd be impossible to follow what was happening. But it is difficult to follow i think in some aspects but also it is much clearer like in the uh, rally race when they're constantly jumping back and forward between speed and trixie because every time one of them talks the camera has to zoom backwards to be in their car or zoom forwards and it oh, is yeah. it's still clear what's going on behind them and around them even though the camera is almost constantly moving yeah don't get me wrong what i'm saying is the camera is as spastic and hectic as it possibly can be and it still makes sense. Right, yeah. Like, it is hard to follow, but it is followable. Like, you can still tell what's happening. It's just there's everything happening on screen. Yeah. If we compare this to, like, the first Michael Bay Transformers movie, where a lot of times it just devolves into a blur of gray metal, and you don't know who the good guys or bad guys are. It's, like, that is... What, what year did the first Transformers come out, actually? Uh, you know, that's a good I imagine question. it was at a similar time. While we're pulling that up, I just want to say how relieved I am that this movie happened before we got hit with the desire for every remake to have it through the dark and the gritty lens. Because the just hyper-saturated campiness of this movie is just fantastic. Yeah, it is, yeah. It is what the Marvel Cinematic Universe eventually was able to do. Whereas they start out, everything had to be realistic. Or like, when you look at those first X-Men movies, where they have their black leather suits on, and they make a joke about um, Wolverine's yellow spandex. 
Whereas <laughs> now we're at the point where like Wolverine could show up in his comic accurate yellow suit and people would cheer. I mean, people were cheered before, I imagine, but now we can. And this movie just jumps straight into it. No, this is this is a live action cartoon. Man, I really want to see Hugh Jackman in that yellow suit. Yeah, I wish I wish we could have got there. Like, I mean, literally, WandaVision, the characters show up in their comic accurate uh, costumes costumes. in in a Halloween episode. Yeah. And the fans love that. (laughs) But also, at the end of one of Wolverine's standalone movies, I think it was The Wolverine, there was like a deleted scene of them giving him his like yellow comic accurate suit with his like the helmet with its crazy fins and. (laughs) <laughs> that never goes anywhere. One, because they stopped doing those movies in that timeline. And two, because he's no longer Wolverine, which is yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Very. I think it would be um very powerful of Marvel to just say, no, <laughs> how much money do you need? We can keep going. <laughs> Listen, Hugh, it would not be the same without you. Do you want to sing a song? We'll let you sing a song we'll if let, you want. We'll <laughs> let you sing as many songs as you want. We'll do a musical Wolverine. They did a Western. They could do anything with Wolverine. Oh, It'll yeah. work. So you mentioned Transformers, and that movie came out the year before this movie. Yeah, that was 2007. They clearly, the Wachowskis saw that and they learned. Because as you mentioned, that was a bunch of gray machines all like indistinguishably fighting each other. This movie was so the complete opposite of that. Yeah. And the colors were almost painfully saturated it wasn't terrible but just everything was a hundred percent saturated They're, they did not want you to forget for a second what this was <laughs> and it looks like no other movie also uh i don't know what the budget on this movie was but i mean they didn't have a lot of travel costs because they never did a single thing on any set elsewhere. Yeah. The the Racer household is a set, and that's really it. That's a set at the studio. Yeah. No, there's no. There are no on location shots. Also, if it, there are no locations, <laughs> there are no locations. This takes place in a city, <laughs> and then some fictional countries. Related IMDb trivia: According to the producer, this movie was shot. In green screen in 60 days. 60 days. Yeah, that's on. Yeah. Day. Oh, there two you go. months. Took them two months. Two months, full movie shot. That's actually impressive. Does it say how long it took to edit it, though? No, it does not tell us that. Because that's a lot of green screen is, to edit. <laughs> listen, this is an animation movie. I don't care about the live action people in it. it is, this is animation. Yeah. The cars are the characters. I'm sorry. I this is going to be a hard transition, but I've been I I need to get to this piece of IMDb trivia before Brandon gets it. I want this one so bad. Take it. <laughs> Go for it. So we're all familiar with Racer X. Uh, yes. Yeah, at this very much. point, yeah. Uh, do you know who turned the role down? Who? Go on. It was Keanu Reeves. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. I would have lost my mind. He took off if his he helmet. Took who's that, just it Keanu? Was just Keanu Reeves. No, let's face it. He would have. You would have known who he was with the helmet he, on. Yeah, he would have started speaking. We'd be like, "Is that?" Yeah. We wouldn't have made it to the reveal. We all would have looked it up immediately. Matthew Fox did a good job, though. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He definitely did. I will never. He will never not be the guy from Lost for Me, unfortunately. Yeah. But he, he did a good job. Absolutely, is just the guy from Lost. Yeah, what do you guys think about the whole the, quote the, twist? The double twist? <laughs> yeah. the Listen, double twist. they went into this movie knowing that everyone knew Racer X was Rex because the show never tried to hide it. Every single time Racer X showed up, the, and the narrator was immediately like, and unbeknownst to everyone else, Racer X was really his brother, Rex. <laughs> like, every time he showed up, it was never a mystery. We had just watched that whole intro, and I mean, again, I came into this blind. I didn't know who Razor X was, but we watched the whole brother thing, and then immediately it cuts to this entirely different actor that's just shrouded in like a little bit of shadows, like, oh, cool, so his brother's like, good then, he's alive. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's him. I, I, I specifically remember when I watched this in high school, I, I was never really good at, at as a kid at like figuring out the twists in movies, and 
I figured that out as a child. <laughs> yeah. And I knew immediately. And then they pulled the double twist on you. He pulls off his mask, and it's Matthew Fox. And Matthew Fox wasn't playing him earlier. And it's like, well, maybe he just grew up. And then he's like, oh, no, no, no. You're not my brother. And I was like, what? Well, also, but he has a different hair color. I also yeah, thought maybe sure. he just got, like, older. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Rex is brown hair, and, and Racer X has black hair. It's, Which I guess he just dies. You I just don't think die that versus plastic, getting yeah, I don't think plastic surgery. surgery. I don't think that changes your hair color. I don't know. If, I mean, maybe they can do that in Speed Racers World. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of shit in Speed Racers World that they can do. <laughs> yeah, but that's all like car related. I mean, all you have to do is relate it to a car, and then they have the technology. So I don't know. Maybe they have hair. Uh huh. Yeah. Something. No. Continue, please. No. No. I'm yeah. Done. What. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like where that's going anymore. I'm done. <laughs> Bailing. <laughs> so, some IMDb trivia about Racer X. Scott Porter, who plays Rex, and Matthew Fox both have the same birthday. Interesting. Oh, that's fun. That's neat. I didn't know that. Love that for them. So he really there's, could become Yeah, Matthew there's only Fox. one birthday listed for the actor for this character. That's great. If I can, if I can take a detour, we're looking at the uh, Amazon... The Amazon page for Speed Racer. And one of the uh, customers also watched listed is Speed Racer Next Generations. Do you guys do you guys want to know the names of the characters in Speed Racer The Next Generation? Uh, not particularly. I it's, did oh, not I'd like any of the names in the movie. That's so. great because it's all the same exact names. Uh. <laughs> so uh, Speed Racer and Trixie, they get married. They have two sons. Can you guess what the first son's name is? The oldest son. Is it Rex? It's actually just X. <laughs> Jesus, are you serious? Does he know at this point? Yeah, no, they they know they're. Oh, oh, actually, I'm gonna spoil the show for you. I'm sorry, it was That's a okay. bad Nicktoon show from around from like 2008. So, <laughs> so Speed Racer has uh, the one son who he just names X in honor of his brother, who I assume he knows was Rex Racer at that point. Okay. So he names his son X, just the letter X Racer, and then he has another son in secret. That he names Speed Racer Junior. <laughs> Hang on, secret from who? Yeah, from uh, every because so, uh, Spritel starts a racing academy because you know we have to have academies for things and cartoons. Okay, Spritel starts a racing academy where X <laughs> is a driver. There's another character named Sparky, unrelated to the original Sparky, who's a mechanic. There's another racer named Trixie, unrelated to Trixie from the show. She's just some black girl named Trixie, and then. Speed Racer Junior shows. I guess there's no Junior because he doesn't know his dad. Speed Racer. Speed. This oh, other guy. So this other guy named Speed Racer shows up to the Speed Racer's school, run by Speed Racer's brother, also attended by Speed Racer's son, and everyone's just like, "Hey, man, what the fuck?" <laughs> just, hang, on, hang on. I need to. I. I I asked the question earlier of who's the secret. Does Trixie know about Speed no, Racer yeah, Jr.? It's, <laughs> Speed and Trixie have two sons. Okay. And then, like, the first son was named X, and then they took the second son, who they gave his father's exact, very distinct name, <laughs> and they just, like, put. I, I forget what his origin is. He's, like, a foster kid or something. They just gave him up for <laughs> adoption? No, they had to, like, they had to Luke and Leia it. It's a Star Wars thing. They had to Luke and Leia. So what? Leia gets to go live in the lap of luxury because she was born first. And Luke goes to live with the moisture farmers. But so but why, though? Did, did Speed Racer become Darth Vader? Like? Oh, no, no, no. So the plot is that uh, Speed Racer invents an electric motor. And the oil companies hate it. So they Are try to assassinate serious? him. And he's like, this is too dangerous. I have to hide my other son away. Just but he is one, named though. Speed Racer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because the other son is already like a toddler, so everyone's like, "Oh yeah, no, Speed Racer has a son named X." That's common knowledge. Speed Racer's other son named Speed Racer. It's a secret son. We gotta hide him away. Give him to the moisture farmers. <laughs> and then, sixteen years later, he comes to go to Spritel's racing school. I'm sorry. Were the <laughs> were the cars of the show running on gas? 
Yeah, except for I uh, that this. They were running on like the sci fi magic. Thing. No, yeah, because th- this is a sequel to the original show, not the movie. So you'll notice the, the uh, Mach 6 in the uh, image here looks nothing like the one from the movie. Okay. Because it's, it's a different continuity. So this is the show. The cars in the original show were running on gasoline. The cars in the next generation also run on gasoline, except for the Mach 6 with its revolutionary electric motor. So he invents the Tesla and gets <laughs> put hits on him. Yeah. So uh, Speed Racer goes into hiding until like season three or something. <laughs> I hate yeah. it the original so much. original speed racer speed racer senior is in hiding until like season three speed racer junior goes to the school and gets bullied by his older brother who he doesn't know is his older brother because honestly if some kid showed up with your dad's whole name yeah <laughs> i'd be like hey dude what the fuck man <laughs> if, not to my- mention if that kid who has my dad's name also has the same name as the racing school we all go to yeah. now. And he drives, I'd pick on him. And he drives a sequel to my dad's car. What the <laughs> fuck? My biggest question here, or concern, whatever, is the one that they wanted to keep secret, they gave the most obvious name to. I know. Why didn't they the name names. the first one Speed Racer and then the second one be called X? Because the older brother has to be X and the younger brother has to be Speed. That's how it works. They literally just copy pasted the first show one generation down. That's it. That's so dumb, though, because if you're going to try to keep them secret, why would you give them your same name? When is the third child Sprite going to arrive? Oh, so eight they years don't... from now. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no like younger Spritel in the show because the original Spritel is the headmaster, so we can't have another Spritel. But it's okay because they gave the role of Spritel to the new Sparky, so he's the mechanic. But also, he sometimes hides in the trunk, and he has a robot monkey named Chim Chim. Oh, good. Didn't even na- name the monkey different. No, yeah. It's a... It's just, they just replaced it with a robot. It's great. I watched so much of this dumb show with bad CGI cars. Uh, I'm better, also a very large fan of the Hot Wheels movie. So this I track. was just going to mention <laughs> better or worse than the Hot Wheels movies. So, for starters, I have seen all of the Hot Wheels movies. Fair. They're actually on the bad movie list. I added them on the one who's here. Oh my goodness, you did? I did. They're oh. on there. I oh didn't no! Know they we were spin, Hot Wheels we spin movies. bad movie. We're watching those. <laughs> I have. It's seen, a series. I've seen at least one of those. I wonder if it was the first one. It probably was. <laughs> so anyway, um, in terms of technical execution, it's better than the first one. I see. There, there are a couple. The later Hot Wheels movies, the the Acceleracers, have it edged out in the uh, car CGI thing. Also because. This movie is a hybrid, the show, Speed Racer is a hybrid show, so all of the cars and the racing segments are CG, and then all of the people are 2D, but it's like the oh. early Flash animation puppets 2D. Oh, yeah. So it's a real, it's a real good time. Also, the original Mach 5 does show up later in the show. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I, I forget its significance aside from just being the Mach 5. <laughs> anyway, that was my tangent about this very okay Nickelodeon show. I'm really upset to discover that all these cars ran on gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it does add to the um, the long list of potential corporate villains that you can have for yeah. the show. The uh, the oil barons from the movie the were oil actual barons. oil yes. barons in the show. Just, yeah, the, uh, the big five from the WRL. <laughs> they just, the most, like, comical like they look like they would have tied someone to some railroad tracks the monopoly yes. man was in there yes <laughs> i do love when the message of a movie is large corporations aren't your friend <laughs> this billionaire just wants to make more money yeah also can we talk about the fact that the essential plot line of the movie was that they were fixing the races in order to manipulate the stock markets yeah. And this yeah. is a children's movie. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's so good. <laughs> the underlying like conflict of this movie is so far above and beyond the comprehension of the age group that it's targeted for. Okay, but listen. 
in 2008 when I watched this movie as a child, this this was how I understood the stock market to work, and it's not terribly inaccurate. Yeah, I mean, this probably better would have better prepared me for GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess we've dated this episode. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're going to know what year this comes out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Listen, all episodes are in the past. The second they listen to them. (laughs) Yeah. So I just thought the whole time I was like, this is the conflict of this children's movie. (laughs) They're talking about buying out companies. And then we get to the point where they win the rally. Spoiler (laughs) alert. Um, They win the rally. And then they're just like, ah, uh, yes, we're still going to sell our company, but now we're going to sell it for more money. Yeah, that was great. That was yeah. that was the whole reason why they needed to win, because they were going to get bought out. But they're like, nah, we need to make more money from this transaction. We exactly. need to win this so that our stock goes up, so they have to pay us more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and th- so the whole time, they're just tricking Speed and X into helping them win so just so that they can just sell their company for hire. They didn't actually care about any of the other stuff. I I didn't know that in the movie the sister isn't sick. So when we made the comment about the sick sister, I kept waiting for that to come into effect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when I asked at the beginning, when she first showed up, I said, is that the same sister? And you all said, yes. I thought that meant that she was sick, too. <laughs> We can't we can't do all the plot lines from the show. <laughs> yeah, so which is a nice transition into talking about like all of the characters who came from the show. It's all of them. Like yeah. all of the characters mm-hmm. who show up, aside from like the random background characters, those are all like actual characters from the show. But they're all original ridiculous actually I don't know about uh Royalton. I don't know about him, but like Snake Oiler and Cruncher Block. All the drivers. Yeah. Inspector Detector, anyone with a stupid name. <laughs> Comes from the show. <laughs> that man's name was Detector. That wasn't his rank. He's his rank is Chief Inspector. His last name is just Detector. <laughs> I mean, also, let's face it, Royalton was also yeah. a uh, really dumb name. <laughs> E.P. Arnold Royalton Esquire, <laughs> the most stuffy, stuck-up name. He really said. That that was his name, and then tried to sell this story five minutes later. That he was like he worked his way worked up. his way up <laughs> from, from below nothing. The ground up. <laughs> did yeah, you, from did his you... parents, from the basement of his parents' foster home. <laughs> like, are you telling me you changed your name? <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, like this guy has, like, he goes by Arnold, but he has like EP also stand for something. He has. Two other first names he's not using. That's how fancy he is. EP stands for evil person. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I was really hoping, and I knew they weren't going to do it, but I was really kind of hoping that they were going to do the whole, like, he looks evil, and it's like they're setting it up like he's going to be the villain, but then he turns out to be the good guy. And I knew that wasn't going to happen, but I was like, it'd be nice if they did that. Nah, Speed Racer is more straightforward than that. Straight as an arrow, that speed racer. Yeah. That's how he goes so fast. <laughs> oh, speaking of speed, <laughs> we got to talk about the end of that last race? <laughs> yeah. He goes real fast. He kicks the car into fifth gear, and he just goes. He's like, you know what? I'm not even going to slow down to fight you guys. I'm just going to go. Like, he just passes them. Like, why'd you have to kill all those other people <laughs> if you could have just gone right past him this whole time? Okay, so, like actual racing logic you do go faster when you don't try and fight people i mean obviously actual racing you don't fight people like you do in this but (laughs) yeah no (laughs) when you're not trying to fight people for positions you do go faster but also if you want to look at the speed racer video game for the wii which i also played there's a mechanic in that where you can store up focus points and then use those for like speed boosts and they stack so if you store up like two focus points you get like a double speed boost. If you store up five, which is the max, you go into like, I forgot what it's called. It's like this maximum focus mode where everything turns purple and you just zoom by everyone. (laughs) So you get bullet billing. (laughs) Essentially, but you still have to steer (laughs) and you can fall off those tracks. Oh, (laughs) Oh, good. Yeah. It's great. You like hit people and they just explode. (laughs) 
So star power then. <laughs> yeah, it's basically star power. I played a lot of that game also. Good. Yeah, like just the the speed that he was going at the end cuz when he first starts, you know, he catches up and then he's going and he's like fighting everyone and they're all teaming up on him and he's like jumping over and smacking them away and doing all these crazy car moves and stuff. Uh, Carfu. Carfu, sure. <laughs> it's officially what it's called, I think. Good. All right. Cool. So he's fighting with his car. He's doing car foo. And then he gets to the, the Royalton guy, Cannonball, fights him. They both spin out. Cannonball dies. <laughs> he, he, gets, he gets sucked into the safety ball and then flushed down the hole in the track. Yeah. Also, why was there just a hole in the middle of the Probably track? Probably for the safety ball. Specifically for that reason. It looked like a fucking water slide thing. I thought that the car was supposed to go down the hole at first. I thought it was like a like a, a like a toilet marble race like bowl situation. Yeah. yeah, but the people are in the big foam marbles. Uh, and and then like he's got his whole moment where he's his car stalled out and he has to like turn it back on, which by the way, that that was so ridiculous to me how any part of fixing a car is throw it in fifth gear and it'll start so pops pops did give like a bs explanation for that immediate he's like yeah no i patched the starter through the convergenator so if he kicks it into fifth gear it'll jump start the whole thing now i don't know enough about cars to know exactly how much of that is complete garbage nonsense well everything through the convergenator is yeah garbage. no i figured that was made up but in no way <laughs> all right essentially is what he said was he wired the starter so that if you go into fifth gear, it'll start the car. Yeah. That is exactly what he said. I, th I think, I think narratively it was just, Hey, I have to make a really quick patch. I'm going to go through here to do it. But also as a side effect of that, if your car is off and you kick it into fifth gear, it'll turn on. But which also, but seems also impractical, it, honestly, it it's basically, he's trying to turn the key over to start the engine and it's not working. So instead of starting the engine with the key, you start the engine with the bypass to the same starter that's in fifth gear. It doesn't make any sense. Why? Unless he removed the ability to start the car with the start button, and you can only start the car by putting it in fifth gear. My favorite part of the whole thing is that he didn't tell anyone he did it. Exactly. <laughs> and so it, the, the mom is like, did you tell Speed that he could do that? <laughs> and he just doesn't say anything. He's like, did you tell the engineer that he could do that? Anyone where this would be a helpful thing right now? <laughs> look, look, there were there wasn't time. This there were a whole, they built the whole car in thirty two hours. He would have finished the race a whole lot faster. <laughs> yeah, they knew. I, see, that's why I think that was just the side effect of some uh, quick wiring he was doing. He's like, well. I actually uh, wired it this way, so theoretically this could happen, but I don't think he was expecting him to need to restart the car in the middle of the race. <laughs> well, yeah. So then after he gets the, the car restarted in fifth gear, all that random BS, right? Then at from that point on, every car until he gets the last two, he passes as if they were not even moving. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's just going so much faster than every other. It was like, why did you? Why didn't you just go this fast from the get go? Why? His why did tires you stop? did melt at yeah. the end of the race. I feel like that was a factor. Yeah. So actually, uh, the heat of your tires is important. If your tires are cold, they grip less. I've been watching a lot of racing things lately, completely unrelated to us watching Speed Racer today. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. There's also the fact that like when he first started, he immediately got into a fight, so he couldn't build up that speed. And then as he was trying to pass, everyone kept fighting him, so he couldn't build up to his top speed. Whereas at the end of the race, he was so far behind everyone, he could just go. And by the time he caught up to them, they couldn't stop him. I see. I see. Okay. Fun fact about the whole tire grip thing. That's why when you see like dragsters and stuff, they do the the burnouts at the beginning before the race. That is specifically to basically pre-melt the outer layer of the tires so they get more grip. Hmm. Well, yeah. Speed Racer. Speaking of Speed Racer. There are <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Perfect. 10 out of 10 segue. 
<laughs> uh, there were three actors that were considered for the role of Speed Racer, but eventually did not get it. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. This would have been a very different movie if oh. it was Shia LaBeouf and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't want to go to that universe just for a day. Second actor, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Interesting. Interesting. He could do it. Yeah. yeah. He could have done it. Third one, Zac Efron. Okay. All right. No, no, no. No, no. I Show me to, the Efron I cut. I wanted <laughs> to say something. He looked like Zac Efron in like half the shots he was yeah. in. I legitimately thought for a little bit that it was Zac Efron. I was like, no, no, no. That's not him. It's uh, Emil Hirsch. So <laughs> they're like, all right, we want Zac Efron. <laughs> Did Zac Efron turn it down? Yes. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. So down. Zac Efron turns it down. They go, all right. Back up, Zac Efron. <laughs> Out of curiosity, can you guys, has Emil Hirsch been in anything else? Because I, I don't know. If I he will has. check. I kind of like that. I have no idea who this guy. Yeah, is. no, it was great. I think it would have been very distracting. Yeah, Zac Efron <laughs> really would have taken me out of it. Very much like Matthew Fox <laughs> as Racer X. If I just saw Zac Efron there, I'd be like, oh, that's just Zac Efron the whole time. I'd be wondering how Speed Racer's singing voice was. Does he have his head in the game? Who knows. <laughs> he has been in many things since then. That's good. None of them are very notable. Um, fun fact: you know how it was one noticed to watch uh, Into the Wild. It's because yeah. he's in it. Oh, that makes sense. That is literally the first thing on his IMDb <laughs> IMDb page. So, can we talk about the uh, the free bird scene? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> so oh, uh, during what is possibly the most jarring cut in cinematic history <laughs> Worldton is giving this very intense speech about like the true nature of racing and then it cuts over to Spritel and Chim Chim who are going absolute bananas no pun intended <laughs> in the uh, Worldton race cars factory and I've watched this movie several times over the course of my entire life and I have never once recognized that the song that was playing was Freebird. And I only recognized it this time because we watched a movie with a Freebird scene in it a week ago today. So, so when we watched The Kingsman, we all remarked about the wonderful... Uh, very, very famous uh, Freebird scene. Yeah, exactly. And that is the only reason all of us <laughs> knew what song that was. So this film started its very early development in the 90s oh yeah this has been development hell for like ever the 90s yeah it took them a long time to make this to make this movie because it just kept getting passed around and like no one wanted it that's like a decade yeah yeah I mean, that's depending crazy. On when. yeah and then they recorded all of it in 60 days <laughs> at some point in the development Nicolas Cage was offered the role of Racer X. Oh my no. god. Where's the Nicolas Cage Zach? Where's the Nicolas Cage Zach? Ever? Okay, this is actually let's let's discuss for a minute. Of the people that we have we have the Nick Cage option and the Keanu Reeves option for Racer X, and then we've got our three backup speed Sweet. racers. What what do we think would have been the best and or most chaotic combination of those people? I think Keanu uh, Reeves as Rex. Okay. With Nick Cage as Driver X. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 And then Shia LaBeouf as Speed. That trio would have produced the most chaotic Speed Racer. <laughs> I think that um, if you had put Zac Efron and Nick Cage on the same shot, uh, it it just they would not have vibed, and it would have been just the most cursed thing you would ever yeah, see. Honestly, I can't imagine them in the same space at the same time. Like, I think that there's it would have been like a different movie if we had Shia LaBeouf and Nick Cage, oh, but entirely. I think that they would have had at least like some kind of screen chemistry. Yeah, because they have the same they have that same kind of energy. Same with like Keanu Reeves. I just do not think that Zac Efron especially in the the litany of works that we have seen him in and the way that you he presents himself could have vibed with any of these <laughs> ra people that played Razor X. No. Yeah. No. None at all. <laughs> like 
I mean, he's he's in good stuff. I'm not saying yeah. that I just I just do not think that I could have processed this movie in the same way. Yeah, this is not a slam on his acting chops. Yeah. It's it's just Sometimes the role just ain't for you. Yeah. Sometimes this role is just for someone who looks like you. If this movie came out today, sorry, now I'm like really on like a casting tangent. Okay. If this movie came out today, do you know who they absolutely would have cast for Speed Racer? I was gonna guess Tom Holland. Hang on, I gotta get the uh it's the the guy the guy from Solo. I think that they oh, would have put yeah, him in here. Okay. No, he yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Like I he'd definitely be the speed racer. Yeah. Has he been in anything since Solo? Oh, let's find uh, out. I don't know. He's been in other stuff. It was just um before Solo. I am sorry. His first name is Alden. I'm not attempting the last name. There's just a lot of letters in it. Do you think that's why they had such a hard time finding actors is because it was in like development hell for so long? That's absolutely, absolutely it. Yeah. They still got John Goodman. They, they still did? got John Goodman. I don't know anyone who could play Pop anyone else who could play Pop's racer like that. Can we can we talk about how hilarious it was every time John Goodman had an action scene? Can we talk <laughs> about the ninja line? Oh, oh my great. lord. <laughs> Listen, they just don't make ninjas like they used to. It's like terrible what passes for a ninja these days. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. That whole ninja fight was like ridiculous. The The ninja who fought um, X. X was actually like very competent, very competent ninja. And they're just like having this whole like choreographed, really good fight sequence. And then they just sent the Bobo ninja over <laughs> next door. Listen, we have, <laughs> we've only got three ninjas. You've got one who's just like, I'm going to drip yeah. some poison down this There's the string. one super competent ninja who never gets caught. The one semi-competent ninja who gets caught but puts up a pretty good fight. And then there's the ninja they sent to Speed's room. And semi-competent <laughs> ninja had kind of the short end of the stick when it came to like people to take down, too. Also true. Yeah. Like, he wasn't taking down. Racer X doesn't sleep. He was standing <laughs> in the shadows with a decoy in the bed waiting <laughs> because he knew. Speaking he, of the ninja that didn't get caught... Why didn't they just like actually poison him well, instead of just debilitate him for a few hours? Hey, they didn't want to murder him. They just wanted him to lose. Well, they, they didn't clearly have if you murder him, he loses. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, they clearly wanted to murder him on the race. Yeah, but that's not in the race. If he dies before the race, then there's like investigations and shit. If he just can't finish the race, it fucks up the business deal, or it makes sure the business deal goes through smoothly, and then they can murder him later. It's like, look, we, we can't murder you now because that'd be, it's too much spotlight now. They really just threw Trixie directly into that death race, though, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, she volunteered for it, but she, still. Yeah, it was her idea, but then at the same time, like. They were very adamant about not letting speed into that race. And they're just like, Tri Trixie over here is like, oh, I here. can do it. And they're like, oh, yeah, I okay. Go, okay, I guess. <laughs> they're like, look, we're already, we're, look, we're already all in on this. We can't stop now. Like we're to, we were not fine with speed doing this. In fact, we came all the way over here to get you to stop. Yeah, Trixie, you can go. Yeah, Trixie's <laughs> Trixie, not their go kid. Go for it. You know, you know, we don't care. Just Listen, go for it. They like Trixie. She's not their kid. She just shows up and eats breakfast. Also, it wasn't even just that she was going in and participating in this race. She was going to participate in the car that had a hit on it. Yeah. <laughs> Like, this was a car that was specifically being targeted as murder the person driving this car. Trixie goes, I'll drive it. Sure, we have no problem with this. Go ahead. They didn't have any other options. You know, they also, just on the subject of they didn't have any problems killing anybody else, they sent a bomb via small child speed racer <laughs> oh, to the yeah. family home. Well, yeah, <laughs> they're much more going home about killing them. Then. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. This guy in the beginning of the movie. The and I was Fenderson. about a quarter of a second away from making a joke about it being a bomb. And he goes, hold on, let me see that. And I was like, it's not, is it? We were and all, it was, <laughs> we were all talking about like, man, he just took like a suspicious package from a stranger and then it was a bomb. He just takes his ear up to it and it just goes tick, 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 tick. <laughs> it was great. 
I really love how good he was at timing that too. Cause he was like, all right, I've put the bomb in the go-kart. I've sent the go-kart into the street. It explodes right in the middle away from everyone's house. If he was wrong, he would have blown up across the street's house. Yeah. My, my favorite part was he took so long to strap it into the thing and set the gas pedal. He could have just thrown it into the street. He just thrown it into the street. Now you're ruining Speed's go-kart. <laughs> yes, we yeah. do. they built that. They could build another <laughs> But like specifically, if you just throw it in the middle of the street, there's no chance of it keep going and going to the neighbor's yard. It would just land in the street and then explode. Can you imagine if he threw it into the middle of the street and then a car drove by? <laughs> or or he he does what he did in the movie. He sets it up in the toy car and the car goes in the street and then a car hits that and it explodes. Imagine explaining that to your insurance. Yeah. The package was thrown out the middle of the street, and all of a sudden, it exploded. I mean, obviously, we, all cars in this universe are completely indestructible. Oh, yeah. Smashing mm-hmm. into to walls and, like, landing in for end after doing a thousand-foot jump does not damage anything in the, ca- in the cabin or the outside exterior of the car. The only thing that can damage a car is when it explodes yeah. for unknown reasons. If you hit something and you were not trying to hit it, your car will explode. If you were trying, it'll scratch the paint. But yeah. there are several times when they're just like, all right, well, I'm going to uh, flip you a bunch of times. And while normally you would have recovered, this time your car explodes. <laughs> it's just kind of random when your car just decides to explode. <laughs> well, I mean, there was, there was that one guy that Racer X just kind of like... Did he did like a footstool jump in Smash Bros? He just <laughs> footstooled him into a rock over a jump. Yeah, that was great. There was also the guy that he like flipped up on and forced to land face first on a spike. Oh yeah, yeah. that guy definitely died. That guy was absolutely like, dead. There was no like bubbles for him. So I really appreciate that they put the bubble in every shot where a car crashes. Cause like no no see they're fine they're fine if you pause it and you look they're fine. But there's definitely no there's like we, no bubble. We the first time we see the safety bubble, we see how long it takes for it to activate when Snake starts crashing. There's no way some of these guys got that safety bubble unless like their engineer like spotting from the sideline saw them and was like, Yeah, they're not making it out of this. I'm just gonna hit the button. <laughs> because otherwise there's no way the car knew, hey, this isn't a flip I in- initiated. We should bubble before we die. Yeah, in particular, that spike guy. The he, spike yes. went like straight through the driver cabin. <laughs> like, I don't cockpit. think a bubble would have done anything for him either. Like, that was the initial point of contact was spike going through driver. <laughs> There's no reaction for that bubble. So this one last fun fact that's actually like actually fun on the IMDb list. And it's that J.J. Abrams wrote a draft of the screenplay. Give me the J.J. Abrams, Zac Efron, Nicolas Cage guy. <laughs> Honestly. I'll watch four hours of that. That's amazing. The extra two hours is just the same movie again with different actors. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a choose your own adventure. Yeah. You can like uh, like toggle through the screen and like pick <laughs> who you want for each role. <laughs> and it just like CGI's them in. This is This is the magic that we could have. If deep fakes weren't like inherently evil. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, my last, my last uh, fun fact is that this is at least the last time I, I was going to say the last time I checked, but that implies a lot more research than I've actually done that this is, um, this is Aaron Hansen, Eagle Raptor's favorite movie. Oh yeah. This is, so that's nice. He just genuinely loves this movie. Yeah, it no, is a good movie. It is absolutely just a good movie. Like it's got a four and a half out of five stars on Prime Video. Yeah. I think that's fair. That is absolutely, absolutely fair. fair. We gotta stop doing that, Jack. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Any closing statements? Good movie. Great style. That's all I got. <laughs> it had a very unique aesthetic. And I think it worked well in this instance, and I I loved it. Much like uh, the Fast and Furious franchise, it's a racing movie about family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been Speed Racer. <laughs> then we are HQ Movie Review. 
I'm Rachel. <laughs> I'm Josh. I'm Jack. And I'm Brandon. And I guess see you next week. Good night, everybody. <laughs>